I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to follow that up, but I'm going to apologize ahead of time. <laughs> that was wonderful. That was beautiful. Well, yes, yeah, so today we celebrate, right? We celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Yesterday we were here pro to proclaim that Jesus, who was dead, is now alive. He's been raised from the dead. He has defeated the power of sin and death, and we have been given the promise of eternal life. It's a lot to have accomplished. He was only born at Christmas. That's a whole lot in just, what, three and a half months or so. So that's pretty impressive, right? So here we are. We're here to celebrate. We're here to make noise. We're here to have a lot of fun. We're here to just recognize this joy, this new hope that Christ gives us through God's resurrection. So yes, there's a lot of things then that we celebrate in our lives. Kind of along our life path, maybe we have a number of things we can think about. First off, we were born. Congrats us, right? We're here. We did a good job about that. Our second big achievement, maybe we don't have to use diapers anymore. Most of us, you know, I, about a year or so ago, I finally did it. You know, so we're, we're good there. We made our diapers, right? Now we, uh, maybe we got through preschool or kindergarten. That's a nice accomplishment. We go through elementary school, middle school. Maybe some of us, you know, we, we got through high school maybe. Or we, we did these things. And all the time we're thinking, what comes next, right? We're celebrating all these nice achievements. We're excited to be done with what it is that we just finished because now we're excited about not having to do all that homework anymore. We just graduated, right? We don't have to do homework or any projects or, you know, show up to school every day. But then we go off from there and we have something else. We go find work. We go to job training. We go to college. We go to trade school, whatever it might be. Every time we celebrate, there's still something more to come. There is always the next thing that Christ and God is leading us in. Maybe it's retirement for some of us. I'm only, you know, 30-some years away from that, counting down the days, right? So maybe it's retirement. We got to there, we think, oh, it's going to be wonderful. And how many of you who are retired would say, I'm more busy now than when I was working, right? There's a lot of people who raise their hands and say that, so... We always have more things that are coming along. So yes, on this joyful day, a day where we come to church with maybe a little extra pep in our step, maybe we, you know, we get these nice flowers, we have our trumpet players, we have the kids sing beautiful songs, we throw butterflies on the choir as they're trying to sing. You know, we're here to celebrate this great and wonderful day. And we remember the story of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, his birth was proclaimed by, sing, by singing angels to the shepherds, by magi in the east coming to visit and to worship him, bringing him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, the newborn king. And then we fast forward as an adult. Jesus gives his life on the cross for our sin. And on the third day is raised from the dead in glory, giving us the gift of of eternal life. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at our gospel lesson today, our reading from Matthew. Verse 9, it says, suddenly, as the women are kind of going back to see what, tell everybody what's going on, suddenly Jesus meets them. It says, greetings. And they came to him. They took hold of his feet. Who knows why it's important that they grabbed his feet? Any ideas? Why does it matter that Matthew's gospel tells us that the women grabbed his feet? What just happened? He was raised from the dead. So they're trying to prove what? That Jesus was actually raised and they weren't just there seeing a ghost or a vision where you couldn't actually touch it. Matthew is telling us by having the women grab his feet that yes, the resurrected body of Christ is standing there in the flesh. Well, that's pretty cool. We could end it there and celebrate and worship. But there is more. The story doesn't end there. Because in verse 10, Jesus says to them, Do not be afraid. Go. Tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. Just like our endings in which we move into a new beginning. Our celebrations today is not the capstone to the story of Jesus' life,
but instead it's a mark of a new beginning. It's the movie that's set up perfectly for the upcoming sequel. So then let's tell the story of Christ again. Jesus is born of a peasant woman, was not born into the fanciness of Christmas celebrations, but instead was born living and sleeping his first nights in a feeding trough, a manger. Jesus, whose family were refugees running away from persecution and death, runs to Egypt to escape. Jesus, then, who feeds 5,000 people and more with only five loaves and two fish. Jesus, who spit in the dirt and made mud and wiped it on the man's eyes to give him new sight so that he could see. Jesus, who traveled around and ate with and did ministry with a big group of fishermen and tax collectors and prostitutes and other people considered society's outcast. Yes, a Jesus who was not afraid to get his hands dirty. Not afraid to live his life and serve and love and eat in the midst of some of life's darkest and hardest experiences. Yes, Jesus knows what it is to live as a human being in our suffering world. A Jesus who did not respond to the anger of crowds with violence, but instead was obedient to his his Father's will, faithful to his Father's will, as much even so to give his life on the cross. Jesus who responds not in vengeance, but in service and sacrifice. A Jesus who shows us who God is. For if Jesus is God, then God is revealed to us in Jesus. God loves each and every one of us. Yes, even the parts that we dress up and try to hide. Jesus loves the outsiders and the outcasts of our time. Jesus is there to pick us up out of the darkness of our lives and calls us to love and to serve the people around us. All of us experiencing this life together. This is the God that we celebrate today who raised Jesus from the dead to proclaim to the world that the power of sin and death has been defeated, that death is no longer the one to have the last say, but that now we have the hope and the gift of eternal life with God. The story of Jesus' resurrection is not the ending, but a new beginning. This morning, Beckett, Bayana, Fabio, Flavia will be baptized. They will be claimed as children of God, sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Through their baptism, they will be connected with Christ and connected with all of God's children, here and of every time and of every place. Yes, Beckett, Fiana, Fabio, and Flavia will be made part of the body of Christ, working together for the sake of of the world in need. They will be entering this new beginning in their life filled with the Holy Spirit. They will be called as disciples of Christ. Kelly and Patty, their sponsors, and us as the community of faith here today are also entrusted and called. We too will make a promise to help raise them in their life of faith. Yes, for us, through our baptisms, we are called to new beginnings each and every day. Each and every day we die to sin and we are given new life. In baptism, yes, we all are connected to Christ. We are connected to a death like his, and one day we'll be connected with him in a resurrection like his. But again, baptisms don't stop with the final prayers and the introduction to the congregation. No, it's a new beginning, a new beginning of discipleship. This promise of eternal life, this gift of salvation is both a now and a not yet. For our faith does not call us to only focus on what happens one day when we die. No, our faith drives us to new beginnings now. Jesus says to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to give his disciples a message a message to go, to go to Galilee, and there they will meet Jesus. We are called to this new life now. We are 
Easter people. People who live in the promise of God's acceptance of us, of God's forgiveness of our sins, of God's grace freely given, and new life and new hope. A people who celebrate that no matter how things may seem around us, that God is with us, that God is there, that God is caring for us, loving us, no matter how bad things may seem. We have a God who knows what it is to suffer, a God who even knows what it is to die. We are an Easter people. We are people who believe that death does not have the final say, and that when things fail in our lives, then God creates new opportunities, that God can create life out of death, a people who trust that when we lose loved ones or when we face death ourselves, that we know that we will and will never be abandoned. We will never be abandoned by God, and that nothing in all of creation, not even death, can separate us from this hope, from this love through Jesus Christ. And we're given this new hope as this Easter people, that Christ will come again to fulfill the promise that we receive in baptism, that we too shall one day be raised with him and live eternally in God's kingdom. So yes, today is a wonderful and beautiful celebration filled with excitement and joy, but today is a reminder of our new beginning to go forth proclaiming Christ crucified and living. We proclaim a God who knows what it is to get God's hands dirty in a loving world, who responds to the violence of the world not with punishment or revenge, but with love, acceptance, new life, and forgiveness. We go from this place proclaiming a God who says to us, I love you each and every day, who forgives us each and every day, who promises that this life is not the end, but that there will be this ultimate new beginning, a new beginning when Christ returns to make all things new, a day when there will be no more sin, no more suffering, no more disease, no more hatred, no more death, a day when we will be brought together as all of God's children, a day where all will be made pure and new. A day when our songs of praises never end, as we are in the glory of God. Happy Easter. Amen.